Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. Big sigh of relief collectively because at the time of the full moon in Leo, January 25th, 12.54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to be saying goodbye to some of the most difficult transits that have been keeping a lot of us energetically in a bind for years, honey. Yes, I mean that for years. These are those same stubborn energies that have been lingering, that have been plaguing. And you, every single one of us individually, have been called to work on breaking generational curses, breaking trauma, breaking barriers, breaking restriction, breaking bondage. Those same areas of our lives are finally, finally, we're saying goodbye to them and we are opening up our hearts, our mind, our energy. We're letting go and we're allowing, we're allowing joy to finally re-enter in. Now, I know with full moons and new moons, we always are invited to start new cycles, new seasons, to set intentions. And that is important. That is things, those are things that we can do to add magic and to petition to create energies that we wish to receive, things that we feel like we're ready to receive within our lives. But once, once in a blue moon, even longer than that, because once in a blue moon is faster and more frequent than the transits that we're seeing here today. But once every so often, there is a huge shift that happens in the charts, in our, the planets, that begins to show that finally there's going to be a breakthrough. And after years of not seeing that, we're finally going to see it. It's the full moon in Leo that is opening that door. So get your tea, get warm, get cozy, get water, and let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, my loves. So looking into the full moon and Leo astrology chart, there's a few things that really stand out to me. And I hope you guys don't mind the fact that I felt it most appropriate and most energetically aligned to work by candlelight tonight. Usually I have candles burning. I have my Archangel Michael candle burning here, even though it's a Thursday and we're only supposed to burn it on Tuesday. I was feeling extra called to light it today. If you guys don't know, we have the prayer going for the last two weeks. It's never too late to join. You can move at your own pace, your own time. I will send the links down below. It's free for everyone. Anybody can do it. But that's my candle. And then also I have my salted cam salt salted caramel candle over here on the left. That is scenting the apothecary and it's one of my favorite smells to work by when I'm pulling charts. So yeah, we have some candles burn burning lit. It's such a vibe. I hope you guys are okay with it. I hope that you can see. Please let me know down in the comments. I'm going to do my best to zoom in on the chart a little further so you can see in more detail what it is that I'm looking at. All right. So having said that, guys, let me go ahead and zoom in to start. So first things first, again, like I said, we have the full moon happening in the sign of Leo. Zooming out, you can see, let me move my candle. Zooming out, you can see that the full moon, well, the moon itself is at the very bottom of the chart in the sign of Leo. Opposing that is the sun falling in the sign of Aquarius. Now that right there is very telling of the energy shifts that is that we're going to be feeling at the time of the full moon. It's not going to directly show all of the change in, tr in the transition that is that we need to talk about. I'm going to talk about that a little later on in the video, but for right now, let's go ahead and start with the basics. The fact that this Leo new moon, I'm sorry, Leo full moon is happening again in the sign of Leo. Anytime when we have a full moon, it's a time for us to close the door, to end cycles, to end chapters. Yes, we can do rituals, spells, intentions, and we can even see this happening in our lives where we're releasing things, we're letting things go, we're moving forward. However, as someone who believes in manifestation setting intention and someone who works with the fullness of feminine energy, the full moon has always been a time for me to set intention for things that it is that I am ready to receive blessings that I'm ready to receive in my life. So if you are using this full moon to release, or if you're re using this full moon to receive, it doesn't matter or to do both, because that's another thing that I highly, highly recommend. And I would love for every single one of us for this full moon. 
what makes this so interesting okay going a little deeper and diving into this because i can't wait any longer is the fact that pluto the planet of death regeneration rebirth resurrection control power is finally 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 at zero literally at zero degrees in the sign of aquarius the sign that also the sun is falling in that if when we have a full moon right we have the moon sitting on one side we have the sun on the opposite it's the light of the sun that reflects onto the moon which will create an opportunity for us again to close out a certain area or chapter in our, our life usually because we see something that we can't ignore anymore it illuminates with that sun sitting in the sign of aquarius the, and Pluto now entering finally into the sign of Aquarius. This is going to open the energy for fresh starts when it comes to new chapters, new new realms of your own de, in, um, independence. Where this independence is going to come from, first it's going to feel like a breath of fresh air, especially because the bonds of Capricorn energy are finally being released. For those of you guys that don't know, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit further into this, for those of you guys that don't know, um, Capricorn energy is known for um, being cold and dry. So anything that we think could grow and be fertile and be barren, we, we oftentimes see a difficult time with that with Capricorn. It doesn't mean that things can't grow. It just means that it's going to require a lot of work, a lot of ambition, and a lot of consistency. Capricorn is naturally ruled by Saturn. Saturn is falling in the sign of Pisces. Saturn is teaching us the importance of boundaries. It is bringing a very hard, realistic truth to our awareness here on Earth. Who can we trust? Who is there for us? What are the lessons that it is that we are being called to learn in this life, especially when it comes to relationships and energy sharing? Now, going back into this Capricorn energy, when Pluto was, before Pluto entered into the sign of Aquarius, it was transiting through the sign of Capricorn. And for years, we were feeling this long time. We've been feeling this these energies of the breakdown of government, politics. We felt um, some in some ways controlled, manipulated by the masses. Are we really looking out for everyone? Now that Pluto is entering into the sign of Aquarius, this is going to make things... It's going to create like a revolt, like a, a revolution in some degree to make things to take into consideration those who haven't um, been taken into consideration before. We went from people for generations who have held in, in seats of power, holding onto their power. Now, all of a sudden, we're going to see the power to the people are those that um, a, a, greater, a greater concern for humanity, right? Looking out for humans, looking out for humankind. Why? Because something is going to force us to come to terms that we are all equal. We all have to look out for each other. Now we'll cross that bridge when we, when we get there, but when it comes to this full moon, it's important that we take a step back and we look at the energies at, as a whole. In your own personal life, right? With Pluto transiting through the sign of Capricorn, there was some type of addiction, some type of pattern, some type of commitment, some type of situation that may have really like restricted you in some way. There were some lessons, some karma that is that you had to go through and grow through in order to evolve as a human here on Earth. There are some obligations and restrictions that we kind of put on ourselves, maybe passed on through society, maybe passed on generationally. Either way, we've accepted it. We're breaking free from it. And then not only is it a quick, easy break, okay, I'm never going to repeat this pattern again, but you have to learn how to heal. This is bringing it back into the full moon that's happening again in the sign of Leo. Leo naturally rules joy. The sun in the sign of Aquarius, the opposite of the full the, the moon in Leo, is saying that it's important for you to, especially with now that Pluto is entering the sign of Aquarius, it's time for you to put all of this baggage down on um, behind you and put it behind you. This can be really tough because it, if this is years of this energy and years of these lessons and years of this karma. You might have like a fight or flight response, like an instinct reaction to kind of expect those energies to kind of linger. But at the time of the full moon, I really want to encourage you to set intention to release that karma, 
to release that baggage, to release those experiences, to release those lessons, to thank them for the journey. And even if it was the most painful thing, even if you are not the same person, these are types of transits that when you finally live through them, you are not the same person. It, at the time of the full moon, it's going to help you to release that karma, to release that baggage, to release that burden, to release those chains and never, never, never go back into that same hardship cycle again. The full moon happening in the sign of Leo then opens the door and activates the energy of joy and playfulness and childishness. This is going to awaken your inner child. With the sun entering or transiting through the sign of Aquarius and with the Pluto transiting through the sign of Aquarius, this is a wonderful time, a wonderful season for you to start to begin and then get used to, because now Pluto is going to be transiting through the sign of Aquarius, you learning how to venture off on your own accord, go out and find the places that you feel the most free, the relationships where you feel the most free, anything that you once felt was an obligation, a duty or a karmic baggage or burden for you to carry, those things have already been dealt with. Most of you guys have done the work. A lot of this energy has been really tough and cold for people's mental and emotional well-being, also their relationships. It can feel very lonely, very isolating. It can feel like you all you do is work, 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 because that is absolutely the energy of Capricorn. It's about being so committed, so loyal to this overarching image or perspective or goal that oftentimes it can neglect some of the more softer areas of our life. Thankfully for the majority of us here, this is going to be a simple transit, a simple moment, a simple blip on the radar. For others, it's important, and it's going to depend on your needle chart, it's going to be very important that you incorporate more soft, nurturing, supportive energies in, into your life to help you to even work with these energies because you don't want to be absorbed by the Pluto Capricorn energy forever. This is again this karmic bond that it is that we are generationally, many people are breaking, not just in this generation, but the generations before, because this is a season of breaking literally for once and for all what has damaged us collectively as a, side, as, a, as a society for too long? Has there been an abuse of power? Is there some type of perspective or opinion or things that we all just agree as a whole? Not even really checking in the history. Why is this the way that things have been done? Why do we pay our taxes? Why is this a rule that we all abide to? Those are things that have been really called into question and we're not done. We're not done. We're not, ref we're not done reforming them. We broke them down. We saw them. We started challenging the book. We started crossing out the rules. We started challenging the politics. We started challenging these relationships. We started challenging the marriage. These are things that we no longer have to choose to accept. I want to remind you or teach you for the first time that, um, and I teach this in Sacred Circle Tarot School, that Capricorn actually rules the devil card. It can be tough because the devil card represents restrictions and things that have a bond over us for good or for bad. And that's kind of the energy of Capricorn here with Pluto was working on removing those toxic um, obligations, toxic duties and, and burdens and baggage. Now, again, this, what, this, doesn't, this doesn't just cover the last few years where Pluto was transiting through the sign of Capricorn. It goes further than that. It's all of those lingering issues, ailments, problems, things that we have all individually in our personal lives or generationally carried from those who have come before us and also anything that was placed systematically that doesn't allow every single one of us individually to thrive or it empowers others and crushes and crushes the rest so it might empower a few and crush the majority now that pluto is entering we'll talk about this again i'll have a whole video about the transit of um Pluto entering the sign of Aquarius. Now that uh, Pluto is moving into the sign of Aquarius, it's going to empower humanity. It's going to empower humans. Now, how this breaks down into your personal life and how you can use this for the Leo full moon is, again, to focus on um, separating yourself even further, but not just separating, uh, separating yourself and detaching totally, but detaching with joy, detaching with freedom, Detaching with new ideas, with uh, opportunity, within a hope for exploration, for healing, 
And the way to heal, the way to heal through this transit now activated at the full at the full moon in Leo, but also this new season in your life is going to be incorporating way more joy, pleasure and doing things not because you feel like you have to. I want to kind of talk about um, creative pursuits because the Leo full moon and Leo energy going back to this full moon, it can it really talks about projects and things that we create that we are proud of and creative expression. This is one of those times where you look at how your own creative ventures or how what you create has turned into work. These are things that you are separating yourself from. These are patterns that you are moving your, yourself away from. You are doing things more, hopefully, in a space of balance. Sometimes in order to see what works, you have to take a big step back and analyze and feel the energy and feel the vibe. Now, Aquarius is not always known for its intuition, but it is known for advancement. It's not known for emotion, although it does feel. It does what it energetically feels is best for the future, for humanity, for people, but also for yourself. When you take a step back and you look at the entirety of your life, are there areas of your life where it's absolutely important for you to let go of some things and free yourself of some, some things so that you can experience more joy, more pleasure, more levity, more laughter in your life? Has work and responsibility and duty and obligations and relationships and even um, expectations of you, has that become so much of your reality and so much of your existence that you no longer feel like your life is something that is fruitful? Does it feel like it's barren? Does it feel like it's dry? Do you feel cold? Do you feel alone? Do you feel isolated? This is the full moon to activate the friendship, to activate the warmth. And, and it's crazy and by crazy, I mean exciting and exhilarating because it's through this little bit of energy of detachment here. Aquarius is so good at disconnecting itself from duty and sense of obligation to master what needs to be done. And it doesn't do it in the sense of, oh, I, I have to burn myself out. I have to work myself to the grave. It's more about I'm purpose driven. I feel purpose driven. The other thing that I want to talk to you about real quick, I just want to switch over because Aquarius is also co-ruled co by Saturn. It's the fact that Saturn is transiting through the sign of Pisces. Also, we have Neptune sitting in the sign of Pisces. This is about teaching you about boundaries. This lesson has already been enforced in your life. You started learning it. You're most likely in um, enforcing it, right? So this is turning your phone off. This is who has access to you. This is uh, cutting out those who probably were there with you for the long haul and that their energies start to reveal the truth of who they are, who they always have been or who they are now. These are things that are also very difficult lessons, but they, they teach you to trust your intuition. Now, Saturn, like I said, doesn't really know always how to work with our intuition. Um, because remember, Saturn rules Aquarius, Saturn rules Capricorn. So it doesn't, it's not naturally inclined to work in the realms of the intuition and vibes and energy and that type of stuff. But it does deal with karma. It does deal with hard lessons. It does deal with hardship. And now that Saturn is um, offering its energy to the realms of our intuition and vibe checks and making sure that the energy is right and good and trusting that that intuition and almost, um, I don't want to say self-sacrificing, but making things more fair for everyone and moving from a higher vibration, hopefully, right? Um, and also pursuing your dreams. We'll talk about that in a minute. It, it's bringing the lessons to trusting your intuition instead of saying like my intuition for years, you guys, and I'm sure you probably have many friends and family that you've heard say this. I felt like something was off, but I didn't want to say no. I didn't want to upset them. I didn't want to make them mad. I didn't want to let the team down. That mindset is something that we are now discarding. That is Pluto in the final degrees of Capricorn, no longer there. 
and saying that for the greater good of humanity and for the lessons that is that I learned, there are some boundaries that need to be enforced and I am not responsible for everyone else's energy. I'm responsible for the energy that it is that I bring and in order for to maintain a high vibration, there's certain things that it is that I have to do as well as there's certain um, things that I feel called to do. So it's going to be about honoring that path and that purpose. So yes, we could see this in our career. We could see this in our routines, our rituals, the things that is that we do every day. But more importantly, and also excitingly, we're going to see this within ourselves. How you're going to see this within yourself, you're going to feel a lot less guilt. You're going to make more time for simple activities that bring you joy and pleasure. Things that you might not necessarily be able to pay for. When Capricorn energy was moving, I'm sorry, when Pluto energy was moving to the sign of Capricorn, a lot of this had to do with investments and trying to um, get the most, for, for many people, trying to get the most of um, resources and trying to advance themselves. This is some energy that I'm watching. We're going to start shift, shifting more into minimalism and even subtracting uh, things that we can tangibly put our hands on. Um, or, or maybe they'll be taken away because that's the other thing too. Pluto now entering the sign of Aquarius is going to start evening out um, the playing field for many people. Um, especially for some people, it could be like taxes and stuff like that, to be honest with you. Things that you're owed, things that are due to you. It's going to make humanity as a whole or societies as a whole kind of more lean more into um experiences acts of service instead of things that we are accumulating for ourselves and putting more money um into the hands and the pockets of business big bigger business pharmaceuticals um larger industries things like that okay i hope that makes sense what does this mean for you girl boy they, them, he, she, whichever. This is a wonderful time, again, not only emotionally to release and to literally finally let that karma go, let that baggage go. If you have been working on daddy issues, mother issues, childhood issues, um, toxic relationships, marriage, working your way out of a, a nasty marriage, working your way out of a career that just sucks the life out of you, drains you, working your way out of debt, working your way out of fear, anxiety, um, guilt, shame, mental health struggles, all of that, right? This is the time for you to really finally and utterly completely at the time of the full moon, take a big deep breath of fresh air and release it, expel it, let it go. This is a fresh start. This is a fresh start. This is a new chapter. This is a new beginning. Now, of course, with full moon energies, it's something that we choose to let go of. But it's also a time for magic and manifestation. Leaning into Leo energy, ruling creativity, joy, play, pleasure, and children. How can you manifest or how can you vibe with those energies even further for the full moon? How can you, exp how, what, what things can you manifest or how can you open up your energy? Or maybe that's something that you write, you petition for. How can I open up my energy? How can I petition to heal, to um, take into consideration my inner child? How can I incorporate my inner child and play and creativity and joy and pleasure into my everyday experience? That's definitely something here. Um, for others, I want to tell you that this is going to be a wonderful time to see a wish come to fulfillment here. This has a lot to do with, um, I don't want to say karma and fate, but kind of, especially with the fact that Uranus retrograde has been in the sign of Taurus. It's been, I don't want to say blocking blessings, but it kind of delays things. It, it kind of through, puts a little bit more hoops that you have to kind of jump through or hurdles in life that you feel like you have to jump through. Definitely opposing the part of fortune. It activates the sign of good luck. So again, 
even though Uranus is retrograde now, the very next day it's going to go direct. We're going to see doors open up explosively in a good way when it comes to good luck, when it comes to adventure, when it comes to promise, when it comes to surprises. There's something here lingering, lingering on the horizon at the time of the 25th. Maybe something that you share, news that you share with others that's going to awaken a lot of joy. It's going to shift um, priorities. Now I can see that if someone is working on their business or someone is working on something, there something opens up the door and all of a sudden there's a perspective shift. Listen, it could be, oh, I thought I was going to just be a business owner for the rest of my life and then I meet the love of my life and this person is a traveler, an adventurer, and now I'm going to join them. There's something here that switches from you moving from dull, monotonous to what's expected to ambition to all of a sudden it's about the experience, it's about exploration, it's about authenticity, it's about healing, it's about going for that big picture. It's urine, it's not just Pluto entering into the sign of Aquarius that's triggering this. It's not just the full moon that's triggering this energy. It's also the fact that Uranus now retrograde or at the time of the at the time of the full moon but the very next day after after that is going to move direct directly opposing the part of fortune sitting in the sign of scorpio now the part of fortune rem reminds us of what where it is that we can find most of our luck and scorpio is that which we release that which we surrender that which we let go so where you're going to find most of the healing is in that which you choose finally to release to let go it could be a difficult relationship it could be a, a relationship or a connection Connection or something again that you felt obligated to but the full moon I promise you is going to be that breath of fresh air that's going to be deeply deeply healing something that you have been waiting years for years so that right there honey I am absolutely going to be creating an oil for this full moon for a multitude of reasons Part of them, before I shuffle, before I show you the, those cards, part of them is because I myself have been going through the trials and tribulations, just like you, of Pluto transiting through Capricorn. It's taught me a lot about how, how to merge my magic, my intention with business and how to show up for myself. Yeah, I think you guys have heard me talk about that a lot um, along my own journey in life. Um, so for me, it feels like a fresh start. I don't want to, uh, push that over on you guys. The apothecary has been something that has been, um, around for years. It taught me a lot though, a lot of different lessons, a lot of difficult things. And I lived through them. I've grown through them and I feel so excited, um, to reopen. So after getting these orders done, taking a breath, taking a break and uh, incorporating all the lessons that is, that I've learned from this entire journey, um, behind the scenes stuff, things that I'm not naturally good at, but things that I'm forced to learn and things that I am have the opportunity to learn, okay, when it comes to business stuff. Um, so for that reason, I'm just so excited to be able to reopen the apothecary. I think I'm actually going to do it. Um, I'll, I'll have a date. I'll put it down, down in the description or down in the, down in the comments, or you can sign up for the newsletter. Um, anyway, uh, but I will absolutely, I have an oil that I've been working on. Wow, look at that, King of Pentacles. I have an oil that I'll be working on that I'll be releasing that goes perfectly with this, with this full moon and Pluto entering the sign of Aquarius. So first things first, my loves, the first two cards that are jumping out that I want to show are actually the King of Pentacles and the Four of Swords. This is about the routine of rest, but I'm also seeing rest is in order, I don't know if this is something that is ordered over your life or something that you want to incorporate more of in your life. I think it's for many of us having more balance. Some of you guys might be feeling the routine of rest and better sleep quality or practices that infuse in your sleep. Um, this could also be awakening. Yeah, temperance card is the card of balance. King of Wands is the card of ambition. Five of Swords is your own worst enemy, making sure that you're not your own worst enemy. What cycles are you are you breaking here? What things are you coming to terms with? What are your ambitions and your goals? What is it that you have to let go of? 
What is it that you have to let go of? What is it that you have to pursue in order to find more balance in your life so that you're not hurting yourself along the journey? Making sure that you're not tolerating certain things, certain energies, yeah. Hierophant has a lot to do with the lessons that is that we've learned, but also more, more deeper than that is why we learn them in the first place and who made those rules, maybe calling them into question and making a new normal for yourself. This has Pluto and Aquarius energy all over it. Yeah, we have five of wands reversed. We have seven of swords reversed and we have ace of cups reversed and the empress upright. This is not, the, one of the things that you're letting go of is the need to fight for validation the need to fight for recognition, the need to fight for what is that you deserve, the need to fight for you to pour into yourself. That is something that you are not taking into you at the time of the full moon. There is something new that's being born here. There's something new that is breaking within you. And I feel like this is you getting exactly what it is that you need in order to nourish, nourish yourself, to support yourself. If there's anything that is happening here that is taking that away from you. We have the Emperor card and the Knight of Wands. If there's anything here that's taking that energy away from you, your ability to nourish, Seven of Swords, I feel like this full moon is going to shine a light on that and show you that this is something that cannot be taken into consideration. For some of you guys, you are in a position to be empowered, You or you should know that you get to choose who you allow in your life. You get to choose who and what you engage with or what you commit yourself to and with that be empowered look at this person she is drumming on her drum she is evoking the energies of empowerment of dance of rhythm of movement she is allowing herself to be free on on like in uninhibited like nothing is in, inhibiting her nothing is stopping her okay now if you ever feel for any minute that you're just like Jess or higher self, you know, I don't, I, I, I need some time to reflect. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't trust myself. I don't trust, you know, what's happening here. I feel you. This is a wonderful time again, where rest and reflection, even though this card is about rest and oftentimes sleep, it doesn't have to actually be sleep. It's quiet time. It's making that more a part of your routine so that you can check in with your energies and not repeat past patterns. Have you noticed in the past that you say yes to things or immediately say no to things because that you may later on regret because you didn't take time out to reflect on them first? We're going to stop jumping and we're gonna start moving with more deliberate action. Remember, pulling all these cards aside and looking at this chart, you are no longer obligated to anything. You don't owe anyone anything moving forward. It's not that you're being selfish. It's not that you're being exclusively self-focused. It's that you're moving with higher path and purpose. And oftentimes with Aquarius energy, it's not that you don't have emotions. It's not that you don't care. It's just that you have to do what's in the best interest for everyone. Okay, that doesn't mean that you lean into Libra energy, you know, the other air sign, and you try to factor in everyone with your energy and your thoughts and your intentions. It just means that, listen, I can't, for the sake of peace of everyone, I can't compromise my peace because I'm a part of the collective. I'm a part of everyone. It can't be everyone else is good and I'm not. It can't be that everyone else is at, at peace and enjoying themselves and I'm uncomfortable in my own skin. There's something here or I'm uncomfortable within this relationship or I'm uncomfortable with this person crossing my boundary or this is not something that is that I want to do. This is you learning how to speak up for yourself and that is going to open the door again for more created, more creativity, more joy, more, more play, more pleasure and even the ability to recreate, to create or to spawn new things that reflect this new reality that is that you are living in right now. Let me just shuffle full moon energies here ace of swords yep it's new awareness it's new perspective it's clarity it's a breath of fresh air it's clean it's rejuvenized we have four of cups four of pentacles five of pentacles especially in the realms of things that you did that you didn't want to say yes to things that you did that you felt like you had to things that happened that put you back put you further back instead of put you in a position where you feel um, resources. This is like working really hard and just 
kind of living paycheck to paycheck and then having an idea that says, honestly, this is going to break me through this pattern of less of lack and just having to hoard everything that is that I have instead of being able to enjoy my resources and then share. How is that good? With Pluto transiting into the sign of Aquarius, this is going to open up the door that there should be resources for everyone. You have Ten of Pentacles here and the Six of Cups. So the, the Ten of Pentacles was reversed. I don't want to overlook that. But basically what it's saying is that there's some type of um, old mindset and old belief pattern that has been set in the ways that I feel like is going to be challenged here. Now, for some of you guys, you're going to be a part of the tribe, part of the people who are activating that shift, that transition. For others of you guys, you're going to be doing your your own your own journeying here on on earth you know maybe helping to heal um remember every time in society there's the people who are out there fighting the war there's gonna not i don't want to bring up the word war because some people are going to get triggered by that and get upset um i'm not here to talk about global predictions youtube is not the place for that i've learned i try to avoid any type of hints of what it is that i see so that's not my intention right now to talk about that what I mean is, is back in the day when there were things where there was um, major meltdowns and things that people were fighting for, not everybody was out on the battlefields. There were some people that were running their homes. There were some people that were raising children. There were some people that were comforting those who were left at home. There were some people who were nurses. There were some people that were making bread. We all have our duties. We all have our responsibilities and not every, every one of us is here to fight, but there are those who will. Not everyone is going to be doing strategy, but there will be those that do. So try to be compassionate and kind to how people are called to show up. At the end of the day, it's their karma. If they're not living up to their path and their purpose, it's not for you to decide. That was an old mindset that we are letting go with Pluto transiting through the sign of Capricorn and Saturn entering the sign of Pisces and Neptune transiting through the sign of Pisces. We all have our own calling. Let us all answer that calling individually. And that goes for you as well. If anything is here blocking um, your creativity, your, your joy, your play, your pleasure, what is it that you wish to create? What is it that you want to share with the world? That's something that should not, doesn't need to enter into your headspace. Now, the last card I want to share with you is the fact that we do have the Queen of Cups here. She's super receptive. She's super op open. She's super in tune. And she's also a natural nurturer, a natural mother, a natural giver. But she also is in a space where she's allowing her cup to be full, filled. I'm saying the pronouns her and she because it's feminine energy, but I want you guys to kind of push that away if that creates a blockage or if you don't resonate with that or if you can't relate to that. It's about pouring into that feminine energy within yourself, your higher intu intuitive self, the part of you that is so poured into that you are kind to other people, that you are generous with other people, that you are considerate of other people's feelings, that you are empathetic. Sometimes with this Pluto transit, through Capricorn, it can make even the more empathetic person start to lose empathy because they're overloaded. So this is why it's so important, again, that you are balancing your purpose, your path with joy, play, pleasure, creativity, and things that you have created yourself, whether it be children or a business or a hobby that you do that you put everything else aside to spend time and to find yourself smiling again. That's what this full moon is going to bring, guys. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so ready. It is time. This four of pentacles energy has been lingering a lot for the collective for too long now. And it's time for us to fill this energy up with the ten of pentacles, who is also here, that has a lot to give in resources. We want to also set intention for security, stability, financial resources, um, safety, all of those things. Okay. So thank you guys so much for joining me and allowing me to read for you for this full moon in Leo wheel of fortune, right? Don't forget that spirits like, don't, don't let them forget the wheel of fortune. The part of fortune is sitting in the sign of Scorpio. What does this mean? This means that your greatest blessings are going to come from that, which you release, you let go, you expel. 
Now, Sacred Circle Tarot School is my school that I teach tarot and numerology and esoteric symbolism. There is going to be a new chapter adding shortly on astrology for those of you guys that need and have been desiring to learn astrology. That is definitely coming down the pipeline. For a little short synopsis, oh, I, I definitely think that you should sign up for the newsletter for Bahati Life down below for to um, get updates on that. But just for a short little astrology lesson, Scorpio actually rules our genitalia and also our, um, what is that called? Um, wow, I just blanked on those organs. The organs that allow us to pee and poop, what are those? I, I don't know why I'm blanking, probably because I've been reading charts and cards all day. Our bowels, sorry, our bowels. Okay, why this is important is because these two organs that Scorpio rules, if we hold on to the energies that are around the reproductive and around our bowels, we find that there is a huge blockage and the body becomes toxic. The, the body becomes overloaded with toxic energies. This is to uh, a direct metaphor for the energies that are going on in your life. If you are holding on and you're afraid out of fear or control, if you're afraid of losing control, if you're afraid of losing your power, if you keep holding on, you're going to find yourself in the same patterns, dealing with the same karma. And the thing is, what's sad is that you won't have Pluto here working on removing, expelling, and cleaning up that which you should have let go of. Pluto is going to continue to move on and address this energy elsewhere, which means that you're going to be stuck in the mud with the muck that you should have let go of a long time ago. This full moon is the opportunity finally to let it go, to release it. If this means that you should go to counseling or continue counseling or thank your therapist because you've already been in counseling for the emotional release that is that you've needed, um, then do that. If this is something that you've already been working on, this is the wonderful time to thank yourself, to continue on with your journey, but also begin to start incorporating the elements of play, joy, play, pleasure, and your creation or children. It's very, very important. Okay? And it can be really tough. It can be really scary. Scorpio energy is tough. Okay? We feel very vulnerable right before we, re we release, right? Before you poop. Think about little babies and dogs when they poop. Their face changes. They look for a quiet spot to go hide so that they can poop in peace. Sometimes they make eye contact with you so that you can look out for them. That's the same thing that, <laughs> that it is that we're seeing with Scorpio energy here. It is a very vulnerable place. Same thing with orgasm, which represents our, our reproductive, right? And our sexual, our sexual organs. If you're holding on to that orgasm, it's really hard. Or if you're so concerned and consumed with how you appear instead of pleasure, you're not going to be able to experience that orgasm. You're not going to be able to experience that release. It's just going to be something that just comes and then goes. That was an opportunity that you lost, okay? Intimacy is also something else that you can look, look for here. Making sure that you're leaning more into being intimate and vulnerable in the places that it is appropriate and making sure that um, boundaries are being forced so that that uh, vulnerability in those places aren't being violated. And you'll know because the energy is off. And if the energy is off, you have new opportunity here to explore anyways. And if you're looking for a sign to date, the full moon in Leo, which rules dating and getting out there and having a good time, that doesn't mean having sex with everyone, but do you, boo? I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying, when I say good time, I mean go out and have a good time. Like literally do things that you like with people that you wish that you wanted to date or new new type of energies. But that's a whole relationship reading if that's something that you need. All right, guys. I have over-talked, I'm sure. But hopeful, hopefully I haven't overwhelmed. Hopefully you feel supported by this chart reading. Hopefully you feel prepared for this full moon. When I get questions, usually it's like, just what do I do? What do I do? Set intention. Set intention for exactly what it is that you want to receive in your life when it comes to, again, creativity, joy, play, pleasure, children. But also, if I were you, I would set intention for you to finally, completely, and utterly let go of the burden, the baggage, now that Pluto is exited out of Capricorn. That curse, that bondage, that restriction, that commitment is cut. It's that cord is cut, it's released, you're free from it. So set intention now for joy and play and pleasure and fun and laughter to enter your life because you're free of the trauma. You're free of the barrier. You're free of the bondage now. 
Now, when it comes to magic, I have a gold candle that I'm gonna be fixing for this full moon. I'll link it down below. Yes, I will link it down below as well as this oil that is now I'm gonna be creating. It's gonna have a special name. Actually, it's the inner child oil. Sorry, guys, I'm not, no surprises. It's a child, it's an oil for, an intention oil for honoring the inner child. Um, and I will have those up um, down in the comments. But until then, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Please give this video a thumbs up and like it if it has been helpful to you. Please subscribe if you aren't already. If you don't wish to subscribe, thank you so much for allowing me to read for you. I hope that our paths do cross. I hope that you are blessed. And everyone else, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.